In the previous video, we looked at the journal entries for the various transactions in this example. And we have them listed down here. So all the various transactions and the various journal entries that take place. The next step is to take these journal entries and put them into the various ledger accounts. Now, the reason we do that is, yes, we have all the information down here and let me scroll down. But realistically, this is a very small set of transactions. I mean, it's only, you know, maybe 15 or so. If you can imagine, you know, large businesses, they will do, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of transactions every single day, uh, potentially more. And just to have a big list of these um, isn't really all that helpful. Now, I also understand that, you know, in most systems, this is done automatically. So, you know, you wouldn't be doing this in the way that I'm doing here. Um, that would be pulled through once the transaction is, is set up, it would get pulled right through. But it is still useful to understand how the system works and what the basic premise is that sits behind it. So once we have these various accounts or these various journal entries, I should say, we need to aggregate them into the ledger accounts. And that is literally as simple as if this is on the left-hand side, you post it to that, that um, ledger account on the left-hand side and you just work systematically your way through it. So 20,000 debit cash, credit capital. I say simple and I'm having trouble typing. Uh, debit office equipment 500, down the bottom here. Credit cash 500. Accounts receivable, debit 3,000. Profit and loss, credit 3,000. We're going to run out of room on profit and loss. I'll have to extend it. Profit and loss is debit a thousand. Oh, sorry, cash is debit ten thousand. Profit and loss credit ten thousand. Debit profit and loss a thousand. So as long as you as you're transposing them, that's not the right word. Um, I can't think of the word actually. <laughs> late when I'm right. Late when I'm recording this. Uh, as long as you transferring them correctly, then everything should work itself out. Credit cash, 1,000. Nothing here. Debit cash, 5,000. Credit profit and loss, 5,000. Debit profit and loss, 2,200. Credit cash, 2,200. Scrolling down a bit. Office furniture, 1,800, debit. Credit cash, 1,800. Debit profit and loss, 450. Credit cash, 450. So cash. Debit accounts receivable, 3,800. So credit 3,800. Debit profit and loss 280. Debit, oh sorry, credit cash 280. Scrolling back down. Debit profit and loss 2,000, We're nearly there. Credit cash 2,000. You know what? I will just delete these so we're not going backwards and forwards all the time. Office furniture, 1400. Accounts payable, 1400. Cash, 500. Profit and loss, 500 credit. Office equipment, 6000. 
where is it down here? Cash 6,000. Cash debit 50,000. Loan 50,000. And we have, just delete that. And once we've done that, we have posted all the transactions to the ledger accounts. Again, not it's better, but we still need to get the balances. And there are slightly different ways you can sort of set this out. Um, you know, but the idea is that we want to get uh, a balance on either the debit or credit side of the of the net amount which is larger. So for cash, we sum up left hand side, so the debit side. We sum up the credit side, and we need. Uh, the balancing amount, which you know, work out separately, but is 7127. And that is going to be the carry down or the opening balance for the following period. So when we add up the debit side, we have 80, 85,500. When we add up the credit side without this, it is a much smaller amount. So we need an amount to balance this out. And that is the amount that comes down. With accounts receivable, it's less of an issue because there is nothing on the right hand side. So we can quite easily just see how that works. And we end up with a debit balance of 6,800. Office furniture, same deal. 3,200 office equipment, same situation, 6,500 accounts payable, same idea, but on the credit side now is just a balance of 1,400 loan, same issue, credit side, 50,000 capital, only one transaction, credit side, 20,000. And with profit and loss, because we've merged all the revenue expense items in here, there's obviously a little bit more going on than would otherwise be directly in here. Uh, we do the same thing that we did with cash. And I'll just put a border on the top there. And that be, we add them up left and right. So debit and credit. And we can see that there is not an even amount. On the debit side, there's 5,930. 5, On the credit side, it's 22,300. We need an amount which is going to be carried down. And that amount, trial and error, or just you know knowing what it is, is going to be 16,370. And so that is going to be the opening balance for profit and loss or the carried forward balance, which um, would ultimately end up in equity. And what we once we've done that, we now have a balance for each of the accounts. And once we have the balance for each of the accounts, we can create the trial balance. And that is simply putting the balance debit or credit into the list of transit into the list of the accounts. So cash is 71,270. Accounts receivable is 6,800. Six, Office furniture is 3,200. Office equipment is 6,500. Accounts payable is 1,400. The loan is 50,000 on the credit side. Capital is 20,000 on the credit side. And profit or loss is 16,370 on the credit side. And what we end up with is 87,770 on the debit side and 87,770 on the credit side. The trial balance balances. And from that, it's quite easy to create the financial statements. We have the assets, we have the liabilities, and we have the equity. So that you could create, um, you know, that would end up in retained earnings. You can create the balance sheet We've aggregated all the income and expense items into, into just a profit and loss straight away. But if you have them disaggregated, you create 
uh, the profit and loss statement again, very simply now that you've got that set up. And that takes us through from transactions into the worksheet, then going through the, the journal process into the ledger, into the trial balance.